So Dennis, you've got a, a pretty strong history in technology, mm. uh, Motorola, Google. What made you go across to, to Dropbox about a year ago? Yeah, well, I think Dropbox is one of those rare companies that has the opportunity to serve every person on the planet, every connected person at least, and every business. So there's three billion people connected today. And if you think about, like my kids, their entire lives mm. are unfolding digitally. They're yeah. taking photos, they're doing their homework. Uh, they need a place to store that information, they need a place to share it, and when they have multiple devices, pads and phones and computers, it doesn't make sense to put it in any one of those places. It really makes sense to put it in the cloud and in a service like Dropbox. In business, it's the same thing. So that's a huge opportunity, and it's just rare to find a company that's in that stage of growth and that has such a big opportunity ahead of it. So that, that's what excited me about Dropbox. And so over the last year, what, are, what have been some of the, the big milestones or most exciting things that you feel Dropbox has, has accomplished? Well, there's been a lot. I mean, we've spent a lot of time focusing on building our international operations. So we opened the office here in Sydney mm -hmm. a little over a year ago. Uh, we opened an office in Paris, in London, Hamburg recently. Uh, and that's really important because about 70% of our users are outside the US, mm. and we earn almost half of our revenue from outside the US. So that's been a big milestone. Uh, Tokyo, I forgot Tokyo <laughs> as well. Uh, but that's been a big focus for, for, for us. And building teams that can serve local customers. So we have close to 50 people here in Sydney. Uh, we have solutions architects, uh, technical mm -hmm. support, sales teams, business development to really serve the, the, the market here in, in, in Australia. And, and how does the market here in Australia and other countries outside the US, how do they all differ? Like are there, are there certain kind of industry verticals that you notice are using Dropbox more than others? Yeah, well Australia was uh, the first place that we really invested in our team in the country and we have mm -hmm. our largest team outside of the US here in Australia. I think it's because there are a lot of forward looking uh, IT departments and CIOs and there are a lot of Dropbox users, yeah. uh, one in three connected Australians uses Dropbox today already and uh, literally thousands of businesses are using uh, Dropbox for business which is our business product. So, uh, so we're seeing in Australia you have people who are working remotely, they're using, uh, they're accessing large files, mm -hmm. uh, they need to get access to uh, video files if they're in the movie production business or yeah. in the creative arts in Australia obviously has a big creative sure. community or big files of data from mines and geological information if you're in the mining industry. Yeah. And again, accessing that remotely, that's what Dropbox does really well. And uh, speaking about that, that Dropbox for Business product, uh, it was just launched recently, uh, a partnership between yourself um, as Dropbox and uh, Fishburners, which is one of our yeah. biggest co-working spaces that houses, I think about two or 300 uh, startups within their um, building. Why, why is it so important to be focusing on the, the startup space for yeah. Dropbox? So one of the things Dropbox does, is we have an API set that allow any developer to write an application on top of Dropbox or use Dropbox in their application. So we're always looking for the next application developer to write to that, to, to our, our API set because it makes the product more valuable for Dropbox users. Uh, Fishburners, a lot of uh, great technology startups, potential partners for Dropbox who could uh, integrate their products with ours and make mm -hmm. a better product for both their users and our users. So that was a motivation. And what we're doing is we're teaching them in how to write applications using Dropbox uh, and, uh, and we're, we're giving them uh, a free trial of our Dropbox for business product. So we're pretty excited about it. And talking about the API, that's obviously uh, an important uh, way that startups can achieve growth by, you know, hooking into the to the Dropbox API. Can you give me some examples of startups that have used the the API and, uh, you know, the, a little bit about their success and the their story? Sure. So uh, we have everybody from the largest companies in the world, Microsoft, yeah. uh, to small startups that are are using us as the default storage uh, location or a choice storage location like in Evernote. Um, we have uh, companies who are using Slack as another example, a startup yeah. that said, look, we're not gonna be in the business of file, sync, and share, 
but if you want to share a document from, from Dropbox into Slack or save from Slack into Dropbox, you can. So those are a couple examples. Is there anything that you think could be a really cool idea that could be built off your API that hasn't been done yet? Uh, well, there's 300,000 applications for mm -hmm. the consumer API, and there's 1,000 applications for the Dropbox for Business API. So there have been lots of ideas out there. <laughs> I can't think of one off the top of my head. Uh, so tell me a little bit about uh, what you've experienced while being here in Australia. I know you, you only got here a day or two ago, but uh, just in general, what, what have you seen of the, the startup scene and uh, what's your opinion on it? Well, uh, I would say, first of all, we're seeing bigger and bigger companies embracing Dropbox and Dropbox mm -hmm. for Business. They're seeing the problems with old solutions and uh, deciding that they need to provide their employees with a solution like Dropbox. Um, an example that we've met with uh, today, Bauer Media, mm -hmm. uh, large publication uh, house here in Australia. Uh, they are using Dropbox for Business as their default collaboration platform, and uh, you know they do, they they manage uh, all of their uh, their their awards that they're. Uh, giving out, I think it's called the is it the the loopies or the I keep forgetting the name of these uh, TV awards. Logies. The logies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the logies are managed. Uh, the 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 voting process is all managed using Dropbox. Interesting. What they, what they did before was they had fifteen hundred hours of television shows, and they had to make sure the right television shows got to the right panelists. Yeah, yeah. So they had people manually cutting DVDs and shipping DVDs via overnight mail to the panelists who then viewed the DVDs and voted. That, that took a lot of time and mm -hmm. things got lost and it was kind of a mess. So they said, we're gonna go completely to Dropbox for Business and now they just put the video into folders and they give permission to the panelists to see the folder on action television programs or uh, reality TV shows and then the panelists can watch the content they're supposed to watch and make their decision on who's gonna get the award. Awesome. So you're obviously very ingrained in the, the startup ecosystem uh, in many parts of the world, but in particular in San Francisco where you're, you're working from now. What are some of the big trends that you're, you're seeing when it comes to technology startups? Well, I think you're seeing some of the, this next generation of startups getting big very quickly and addressing massive markets. Um, you know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago when Google was starting to grow mm. or when Facebook was starting to grow, there were several hundred million people who were connected to the web. They were all accessing through a PC. There was yeah. no such thing as an iPhone. And, uh, and so it took a while for a business to grow and get big. But if you, if you think about where we are today, we have three billion people connected. Something like five billion mobile devices yeah. are connected to the web. So you can get an app out there like Dropbox or Uber or Airbnb into the hands of hundreds of millions of people very quickly and build very large businesses uh, quite quickly. So that's really new and it creates incredible pressures on those companies to grow, to hire globally, to move quickly. Um, and and that's, that's a lot of what we deal with at Dropbox. How do we scale the business, mm. hire the right people in the right place uh, around the world? And on that point with uh, you know, mobile devices growing faster than any other kind of personal uh, internet connected device around the world, what, what are important, uh, you know, uh, I suppose, new features and uh, new projects is Dropbox working on around the mobile space? Yeah, so over half of our usage now is mobile. Mm -hmm. uh, people tend to create still on a laptop or a PC, yeah. whether it's a PowerPoint or uh, an ad campaign, a video, a television show, they tend to view and, uh, and watch and engage on a mobile device because they're on the train, they're, they're waiting for something, whatever it might be. So it's really important that our product work in both situations really, really well. Uh, when it comes to mobile, we've spent a lot of effort in the last year improving mm -hmm. our mobile apps. We just launched mm -hmm. today a new Android app yep. uh, using Material Design. It's very slick, it's very fast. Uh, the performance standard that consumers and businesses have is incredibly high, so they want things to load quickly. They want the experience on whether it's iOS or Windows or Android uh, all to work seamlessly and, and feel the same. So we spend a lot of time making sure that everything works well together. That's one of the advantages that we have. We're not we're not embedded in one single platform. We really yeah. work across everything. So, so those are some of the things that we've been focused on. 
And uh, to wrap it up, what, what's the next year look like for Dropbox as a company? Well, continued investment in countries around the world where we have demand and where customers want to work with us, such as Australia. Uh, you'll see continued investment in the business product, uh, bringing more security features, uh, bringing more collaboration features into Dropbox. We have a product that's in alpha called uh, Notes, which is quite interesting. Uh, and I think you'll just see continued innovation from us uh, on a number of fronts. Mobile's a great example. Awesome. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. If you want to get some more information on Dropbox, you can do so by looking at the link below.